Good morning and welcome to MarketCast 19. Would you believe it? 19. We're live again here from the AF Oliver offices here in Bournemouth and it's still grey. It's a still a grey, even though we're halfway through March. I'm looking forward to when I can say we've got blue skies and sunshine and all those other good things. Um, and we've got, well, news to tell you. The budget. Uh, well, it was a bit of a shock, really, wasn't it? I was going to do a special market cast just discussing exactly what had happened and all the measures that had been brought in during the budget and how that was going to affect the industry. Uh, well, the, the Jeremy Hunt obviously proved that maxim that nobody is right all the time because I confidently predicted before the budget there would be a little bit of bribery going on in there. They would make some changes. They would make home buyers better off. They'd do stuff building up to the inevitable election that we've got coming up in the autumn. And of course, they didn't. They did absolutely nothing whatsoever. Uh, so little or nothing to report on that. And all we've seen instead is a market that has carried on quite oblivious, really, to all the stuff that's going on in the background, whatever that may be. I did actually ask the production team here this morning. I gave them a little bit of a, 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 a quiz. Give me a, here's a riddle for you. What has the recession that we're currently in, some of our more prominent politicians and the North Sea all got in common. Well, of course, I was looking for the answer shallow. Uh, and James, who heads up our production team here, said shallow and a little bit dirty. And I don't know what he meant by that. And I don't think I'm going to comment any further either. OK, yesterday then we had Rightmove come out with their latest asking price index. This is the asking price index for March. Whether you like the right move index or whether you hate the right move index, it's 95% of UK properties for sale are on, on, uh, listed on right move. And their index, which doesn't involve all of those 95%, of course, the index only refers to the new listings that they've had since the last index. So that's a really important point. But it's one that can't be ignored. And as I'm sure you know, it came out yesterday, it actually saw a 1.5% uplift in March. That's important to put it into context. Normally, as you go February into March, there is always an uplift in asking prices or generally, uh, but it's normally runs, it averages out, I think over the last 22 years, right moves say that has averaged out at 1%. So this is actually half a percent above their 22 year average. Tim Bannister says he is the chief property science officer or some such grand title. I'd love a title like that. He says, is this confidence or is it over optimism? And there is no question when you actually look at the amount of time, some of the properties that are actually go online, stay online before they get an offer made against them. It's because they've been priced wrongly in the first place. That market is still sensitive. Do you remember that picture that I put up, the AI generated picture that I put up a couple of market cars to go with the sensitive expression on it? The market is still very price sensitive and we shouldn't overlook that. It's really important. Nevertheless, if you follow the indicators, the Halifax and the nationwide February numbers were both in positive. We've got both of those well-respected indices actually showing the annual number in growth. And even the RICS survey has started moving above the line of positivity, which is a proper shock, almost as shocking as Jeremy Hunt's budget. And finally, then we've got the consumer confidence barometer. This particular market cast, the timing of it is a little unfortunate because we've got the next uh, consumer confidence numbers due out next week. And we've got a couple of really important events in between. Such a shame we don't have that number because that's going to really dictate how we see the market pan out through the rest of the spring uh, and then into Q2, uh, which I think as we go into the summer could be tricky. But let's not get ahead of ourselves uh, and let's take a run through. Let's see how the press are feeling, see how people are feeling. Yeah, there's no question about it. The outlook is definitely improving as far as the media is concerned. This article here actually appeared in which magazine yesterday. Uh, so it's right bang up to the minute. Um, and they're saying what's happening to house prices. Their subhead in here, and just in case you can't read it, says 
Prices fell about uh, fell by about 1% last year, 2023, and further drops could be on the cards. So it's a conservative approach from which, something that we would expect from them, all numbers based on land registry data. Now we've talked about how that land registry index works uh, oh, ad infinitum, uh, and we know that its big problem is that it's so far out of date, and also they adjust the numbers months further on when they get the proper volumes and the and the, uh, the correct data through. So it's always a bit tricky for us when we're trying to look forward rather than back. But that's where the uh, land registry had the UK market last year. I personally think, bear in mind, they had uh, had the market up 9% the year before, that a 1% fall in 2023, well, much better than anybody expected, unless you watch Market Cast on a regular basis, of course. Uh, do you know, I'll tell you what, what I haven't mentioned yet this morning, and I've just caught it in the monitor, is my Market Cast spring shirt. Now, I know it's a black shirt, but it's spring because it's got flowers on it. That's the whole spring thing. I've got a white version of this as well that I might get out of the cupboard at some stage um, as, I, as I head towards 20 Market Cast shirts. Uh, but look at the Guardian here as we're picking up the points uh, uh, how the press are seeing the market right now. Signs of UK housing market recovery as price falls E. So this was uh, a week or so ago and you can see there uh, that they've They've talked about the same land registry data, the Office of National Statistics data here. Um, property prices decreased by 1.4% in the 12 months to December, but they say the prospect is one of improvement. And crucially, when this arrives, so despite all its idiosyncrasies in terms of its asking prices and its not selling prices, but when Rightmove published that sort of uh, headline there, one and a half percent, uh, 13 percent increase on sales agree compared to this time last year, um, an eight percent increase in buyer demand compared to this time last year, well then it is going to produce this sort of headline. This was The Guardian yesterday in response to that right move story and you can see there, this was in their business section, UK housing market sees spring revival. Uh, I hope you're all feeling that spring revival. As I'm traveling around the country at the moment and I go and talk to various groups uh, of developer clients and their sales team, something I absolutely love to do because you, you get to meet the people that are right at the sharp end. It's easy for us to stand here and say stuff like this, but the people that are having to sell this property day in, day out and get that feedback, then you get a real sense of how the market is. Uh, and, and I hope you're feeling that revival coming through the sales offices. Certainly sales rates this year an awful lot better than they were at the same time last year. And they also have weighed in here with quite a big story based on the right move index release. Uh, and it, they say UK house prices rise by one and a half percent. Big mistake that Guardian, big mistake. We know it's asking prices, don't we? So that's not prices, that's asking prices. And that, that's a very misleading headline. Most of the press have got their head round that now, actually, and, and are doing that properly. But all of this, the point I'm making is that all of this feeds into consumer confidence, and that for us is absolutely critical. I've got the property mark, you know, the number one chart, which I'm gonna show you in a minute or two, which has really got some very, very interesting data to impart. But I thought it was worth this month because it was such a, a significant set of data, including their headline, their flagship headline uh, from their January 24 report, which is the latest one. This is the last one that they've published here. Look at this, 129% increase in the number of market appraisals undertaken, 80% increase in the number of new properties coming to market, and then 120% increase in the number of potential buyers registered. This is opportunity writ large. If you are going to follow my theory over what's gonna happen over the, the, the extent, the full extent of 2024, this is really important. So we have this spring window to take advantage of. There are people out there that are in the mood to be persuaded, and I say that very deliberately to, uh, to the large number of developer viewers of this market cast. Uh, interestingly, 
There is a guy on Twitter called Moving Home with Charlie who famously, famously and relentlessly uh, talks the market down and says we're all going to go to hell in a handcart and 30% crash over a number of years and stuff. And he commented on this report and outrageously in his tweet that commented on this report, he mentioned this. A lot of people, more people out doing market appraisals, huge increase. And he mentioned this, the fact there'd been an 80% uptick in properties come to market. But bizarrely, he forgot to mention this, which I found very interesting. Now, I normally avoid Twitter like the plague. Have you ever, do you ever go out and touch the Twitter sphere or X, whatever it's called these days? It's a nightmare. They've never, if you, if you use the word nuance, they'd think you were talking about some fancy French dessert. You've never seen anything like it. You make a comment and you, you crash and burn and people pile on. So I very seldom do that. I only ever go on Twitter to talk about my football team or my dog. I couldn't resist commenting on that. I thought it was an outrageous thing to do. So here's the balanced picture of the property mark, mark report. And this is the thing about the property market. It doesn't work like other supply and demand markets. Normally, the shorter, the lower the supply, then the greater the demand for what is available so prices go up. In the property market, that only works to a certain extent. And if you take all of the supply out, the market then atrophies and, 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 and falls in on itself and everybody sits on their hands. You need that fluidity and liquidity, I should say, in the market. Uh, this, I, I believe, is great news to see the stocks, the agent stocks increasing. And this leads to, obviously, increased consumer confidence. Uh, regular viewers of the market cast will know how this chart works. So I apologize if I really briefly just explain it each time in case somebody is watching this market cast for the first time. But importantly, and I've tried to make it clearer now after a few comments, I had feedback that the zero line is right here. So with GF, with, with uh, Consumer Confidence Barometer, GFK asked 2,000 people every single month, same questions. It's brilliantly reliable, this. Are things going to get better or worse in the next 12 months in a different set of categories? The red line here is the overall index score, and the other three colors represent categories that really matter to the people in the house building industry. If of those 2,000, 1,000 answered positive, the other 1,000 answered negative, you would have a neutral zero. When you're in negative territory, it means that the majority of people that have answered have said things are gonna get worse, not better. Here are, the, here are the questions. So this blue line here that has come from depths lower than they have ever been in the 50 plus years this survey has been running, Right down here at minus 60, and it was more than minus 60 uh, in, in September, obviously, after the famous Trust Quarteng uh, magnum opus. And you can see where that has gone. This is, is the UK economy going to get better or worse in the next 12 months? This is where it's gone. This is where it's gone. And you've felt that everyone, every one of you have felt that in the sales office and your reservation rates over the past few months. And you have felt that come back. So it's still deep in negative. And look, in February, that trajectory actually changed slightly and it took a slight step back. We had one or two bits of bad news in February. Interest rates held where they were. We had inflation that got stuck, didn't it? Just about 4%. And so that actually came down a little bit here. The green line here, is the next 12 months a good time or a bad time to make a major purchase? like a, a new kitchen or a new car or a new house. And you can see here how that has increased too. Still in negative, that's this whole situation we have with trying to get people over the line. That uncertainty, I, you know, I, I, I like to think of this as my uncertainty index and uncertainty is one sure way to kill down the property market. People making a commitment when they're uncertain about their future. But look at this line here, which is how do you think your own personal finances are going to fare over the next 12 months? Well, you can see. And again, this has come from historic lows, by the way, all the way up through here. It touched neutral in January. And despite the fact that in terms of, of how people felt the economy was going to do over the next 12 months or whether it was a good time to make a major purchase, you can see 
the belief in their own personal finances stayed level. And that's despite the fact that we've got a weakening uh, employment market. So really important and feeds into my narrative about how the market is going to behave as we go through spring towards the early summer market. This is what happened with inflation. Look, uh, let me put the numbers on there. Hold on. There you go. This is what happened with inflation. Uh, we got stuck at 4%. Still good, but not good enough. Uh, the bank then said, well, hang on a minute, you know, we probably don't, we don't want to move too fast back down the chain. We're going to hold rates of five and a quarter. So crucially, we've got a really big week coming up with this week, haven't we? And we've got inflation numbers coming out tomorrow. This is going to be massive. Word on the street says the inflation numbers, when they come out tomorrow, could start with a two. Could be two point something. You know, I think it's going to be a major drop. I, I personally think it's going to be three and a bit. Uh, it could start with a two, and if it does that when the MPC meet the day after, well, all bets are on at that point, aren't they? Here's the other side of that picture, which is crucially important, of course, to a point I'm going to come to shortly. This is wage inflation here. So this top two lines here show uh, uh, real-time wage inflation, uh, and you can see where that sits. Look, here's 5% through here. And although it's come down significantly from when it was approaching double figures, it's now sort of six, six seven percent, uh, whether you include bonuses or not in that. But here's, here's real inflation. So this is adjusted inflation there. So what? So, so taking wage inflation, deducting general inflation, and here's the net inflation in earnings. And you can see that that has been positive now for seven months. So. So that, that picture then is improving. And of course, all the time that this real inflation, adjusted inflation is above the zero line, that makes property cheaper, doesn't it? Whether the prices of property move or not, because we all know that in the end, it comes down to the amount of disposable income that you need to find to buy a property that actually drives those prices and volumes. These are the way that interest rates are, are moving. Don't intend to dwell on that, but you can see a slight, just a really slight uptick there in the last numbers as the banks, the building societies and institutions got a little bit of cold feet as the reduction inflation slowed down, swap rates suddenly started slowing down, products started being removed from the market. I think we're currently in a, in a situation where the duration the, 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 uh, 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 of products available to, for uh, home buyers, for people who want to take mortgages out, is now very, very tiny indeed. Uh, in fact, it's as short as it's been in a long time where institutions are nervous about offering great rates over a protracted period and they get these products get put up and they get taken down. And you can see that little bounce there, but we've still got, at best, if you look at a two-year fixed rate mortgage, if you go down to as low as 60%, you're still below 5% there, 4.62% for a two-year fixed. <coughs> Excuse me. And even right up here at 95%, uh, it, that's at 5.74. And that's the average rate. There are better rates than that. If you take a various range of fixed rates from two up to five, with a 75% loan to value, you can see some of these rates here, 4.55 down here, 4.4 for a five year fixed rate loan, 75% uh, loan to value. I mean, that's really competitive and getting close to that magic 3%. I'll show you, I've, I've kept that slide in from last month. I had a lot of people ask for a copy of that slide and a bit more explanation. The key dates then that we've got, Tomorrow, tomorrow it's inflation numbers. If that starts with a two tomorrow, well, I, I think that actually could have a significant effect almost to the extent that it might make me go back and readdress my forecast for the summer. Because of course, the day after we've got the MPC meeting. Um, and uh, I say again to the members of the MPC, if you don't like that slide, send me a nice picture. The one, Mark Carney, who was a bit of a showman, wasn't it? It's obviously the, you know, the Canadian, the sort of uh, the North American. I'm not calling him an American, by the way. No, he wasn't. Um, but that showman in him, he, he took some great publicity pictures. I'd love to run one for the current MPC. Can't find one. That's the best I can do. Uh, but they meet on Thursday, and I think their decision 
will be significantly impacted and affected by tomorrow's numbers. So two really important days coming up and, and days that could have a substantial, a substantive effect on the way that we trade through uh, the second and third quarters. We'll see, we'll see. General election in the autumn, almost certain. And don't forget, I know I sort of did an election piece in the last market cast. I've, I've been working on that to try and refine that down a little bit. And I will do another one of those, maybe not next month, possibly the one after when we, it becomes a bit clearer when that's going to be. But there is absolutely no doubt that if you look at all the data, we see that, that volumes get suppressed in the run up to the election and then they increase coming out of it. Naturally, people are, believe if there's going to be a, a change in government, there's almost certainly going to be a change in policy. And that is going to affect their ability in terms of affordability of what they want to buy. And crucially, and more importantly, affordability of any long term arrangement that they enter into for the years afterwards with a new government. So so we'll touch on that again, but let's just all expect as an industry that during the summer, we are going to get a little bit of that election itis uh, and that's going to put pressure on volumes. Please factor that into your thinking. So key dates to key data. That was so clever. I left it in. Why wouldn't you uh, look at this chart? This is this is a this is a two reallys ready. This is a really, really interesting chart. Uh, this is the property mark survey from from January. Uh, and I take their, they used to produce this beautiful chart and they don't anymore. Heaven only knows why. I have emailed them, by the way, and asked them why. So I just take their numbers and I make the chart for them. I could sell it back to them, couldn't I? That's, yeah, OK, I need to think about that. Look what's happened here. For those of you who've watched Market Cast before, you'll know how this chart works. So this goes back here to when the market turned, the transition in the market from that crazy 2021 market that we had that went into transition in spring 2022. The colors on these bars, so these are 100% of the deals done by members of Property Mark, the Association of Estate Agents Property Mark. If the deal was done at lower, worse than asking price, discount from asking price, it's gray. If the deal is done at asking price, it's orange. And extraordinarily, when you look at what was going on in spring 2022, these are deals done above asking price, which at one point touched 40% of all deals were above asking price. I mean, that really is unbelievable. But look how the grey spread. Look, you know, people ask, when did the transition happen in the property market on this uh, current cycle? Look at it. It's so clear. It's not true. So as the grey spreads, here are deals done below asking price, spreading right down here. You know, that, that, this absolutely is indicative of a very difficult market. Look what's happening. Here we come. Here's 2023. OK, and this is where it got really, really difficult, didn't it? Two really <laughs> difficult in here in autumn 2023 and we've come through the year confidence has increased people are feeling better i forecast a spring uptick look at this in january that blue which is nearly that's nine percent that reading nine percent nearly one in ten deals done in january by the property mark members were done above asking price and if you take that and at asking price 30%, nearly one in three. Now, one swallow does not make a summer. This is not yet a trend. I'll be very interested to see what the February numbers look like, and then I'll be able to give you a much better idea. But heavens, that is a really important number. I strip away all the colors and, and, and look at it like this, because these are deals that are done at or above asking price. Look at this, up to 30%. There's a great indication of the recovery that we've seen this spring. However, I think there are clouds ahead of us. Uh, we're still not up there again on, on volumes. These are mortgage approvals. Latest numbers I've got now are January and January has got up to 55,000. That's still miles short of where we need to be. 
Now those mortgage approvals need to be at 66, 67, 70,000 if we're going to hit volumes in the UK that we're used to in the five years from 14 to 2019 up to COVID. We need 60, 70,000 mortgage approvals, which give us around about 100,000 sales per calendar month, if you even out seasonally. 1.2 million transactions a year. We're still well below that, but we are climbing back. And I think we'll see the February numbers in the 60s. And that then starts to take us back. I do see the volume for the year is going to be over a million. It won't reach, won't reach 1.2, I think closer to 1.1. But the, the classic indices, I won't dwell on these because we're running short of time, but nationwide and even the nationwide, look, 1.2% they've got now annual change to the, for the year to the end of February 2024, uh, with the February uh, index going up by the same level as January at 0.7%. Um, and that means, that, yeah, I've talked about this so often, this long run average, the, the, the ratio between average earnings, average uh, disposable income, or average income, um, and average house price costs, that eventually that has to come back down here to meet this four and a half. And it's a balance. It's a balance of earnings, prices and interest rates. Those three factors that all play into that. And that coming back down here has stalled slightly uh, with the improvement that we've actually seen in prices at the start of the year. This is the slide that I left in. This is the slide that I left in uh, from uh, last month. And you can see here that this is where we currently sit roughly, roughly in terms of interest rates. Uh, and this here is the long run average that, uh, uh, of the percentage of take home pay that mortgage payments account for. We have to come to this line. And this is the point I was making earlier on that the, actually that the price of the house is substantially less important than the combination of price, interest rates and earnings that bring this blue line back to this line here, because it has to come to that line. It's like a pendulum that swings. It will always eventually come back to that center bar. You know, people say to me, well, prices are too high. OK, so where would you like prices to be? I mean, I could show you an ad from the 1970s that's got a four bedroom detached house for sale at 950 quid. So is that the right price? Of course, it's meaningless, isn't it? Because back then wages were commensurately small. So as wages go up, interest rates fluctuate as so do prices. And the whole thing is such a complicated thing is actually a mixture of all three things. But one thing's for sure, as sure as night follows day, that eventually we have to come back to this point here. And if interest rates were at 3%, that's where we would currently be with average prices where they are right now. That really is our guide. And that's why interest rates are so incredibly important and money availability. And this was the chart. This was the chart here where the Bank of England that produced by Nationwide, but, but figures from the Bank of England showing where they believed interest rates would be. And with the latest estimate here showing that they reckon in five years time, interest rates will be just above that magic 3%. So that's how I sort of feel when I start to take a longer term view of the way that prices are going to move. Here's the, the Halifax index for February again, showing pretty much exactly the same thing. Um, uh, we've got here annual change at 1.7%, very, very similar. I've never, uh, it's a long time since we've seen them so similar to the nationwide numbers. The right move index I thought was worth sticking in the, uh, the numbers underneath the headlines, because look at this, look, the top of the ladder uh, in February plus 2.9%, that little red, circle or a square rather around that number was there on last month's figures but i'd used it to indicate how this was lagging behind the other property types look at it now that really has taken a big hit up here are the zoopla numbers again they're showing a very similar picture zoopla now have annual price inflation to the end of february at just under zero minus 0.5 percent it's as flat or as close to flat as you like. Um, but again, they're showing that same sign of increased levels of activity. And then when you actually look at this, uh, and, and so th these are compared to 2023, buyer demand, demand up 11%, number of sales agreed up 15%, flow of new supply up 10%, 
and stock of homes up 21%. That is the picture that was being reflected in those property mark numbers right at the start. So all of that talks about greater liquidity in the market, greater fluidity in the market. Uh, and even the RICS, and I won't dwell on this because we're right out of time, uh, uh, have got positive signs in their February survey. We're starting to see, look, this is where they believe prices are going to go. And even the surveyors believe on a national uh, basis over the next 12 months, we are going to see prices in positive territory. The next three months are going to be tricky. And you can see this, these are the regions across the UK. And that is where the surveyors believe prices are going to go in the next three months. And I agree with them. OK, really quickly, then a couple of minutes to run through values and volumes then this year. This is my market factor matrix, and I always like to compare it with, with the previous year. This was April 23. Uh, this is how things have changed, dramatically changed during that time. There was another little stamp duty change in the budget. Having said that uh, Jeremy Hunt did absolutely nothing at all, he did a couple of things. Number one, he took away stamp duty relief on HMOs, houses of multiple occupation, of course, uh, so to try and close loopholes that people were exploiting. But obviously, he did hit property investors uh, with that. And of course, he cut down capital gains tax, didn't he? From 28, I think, to 24 or 23%. Can't remember now. But capital gains tax on property was slightly reduced, made it a little bit better for downsizers. That must be a bit of a help. That's as much as I can offer you. But you can see the stamp duty stuff has moved right back down here. The employment market continues to deteriorate. And that for me is a worry. I think that's a, a really important, just one really, it's a really important factor um, in how the market's going to go next. Right up here still, this top quadrant there is all about the developers doing stuff. And as I've said before, right now, if you can build into your proposition and your offer to prospective purchasers certainty, even if it's only two years worth of certainty, that's going to give you a really big selling advantage. And that leaves us with this then. So these are the dark blue here are actuals. This is where we were with the nationwide numbers at the end of January. We moved into positive, as I just showed you, for the February numbers. And I believe that when the March numbers come out in a week or so's time, uh, we will, a couple of weeks' time, we will see March up here. So just a tiny further tick on. We always predicted an uptick in March, but just never quite that big. I still think we are going to have a difficult summer, just like the surveyors in the RICS. I, I'm not changing my mind on that. And I still think that we will end up the year flat. So let's not start believing that the market's behind us and we can gallop away. It is still highly price sensitive. And if we really want to get those deals why we're in this spring uptick, then we need to be a little bit aggressive with our dealing. Be more swan. So do it all underneath the water with the, the fins and keep looking elegant uh, and serene above the surface. Uh, so in summary then, uh, and I've gone a minute over, haven't I? So, or two minutes over, all right, okay, <laughs> in summer. So I've adjusted my way, uh, my view of the way the year's gonna outturn with a slightly better spring, slightly less of a, a shallower curve through summer. So that's the, um, the, the, that's the North Sea, uh, the recession, and the summer downturn is all getting shallow. Pricing is still critically important. Volumes are improving, but they're still under pressure. We're not going to get back to 1.2 million. Don't start thinking that anytime soon. And the new home share of the market is still below its long run average. So we're going to have to work harder for every single one of those uh, sales. Critical factors are going to affect it. Next month's market cast is going to be really important because obviously we've got the inflation numbers and the MPC numbers coming up in the next few days. I'll try and put a LinkedIn post out. Uh, about that very thing. Um, please get your diaries out and adjust it right now. Thursday the 18th of March, outrageously after market cast 18. I forgot to say thank you to James, to Hannah and to Joan who make all of this possible. So hugely sorry to them and a big double thank you for today. Uh, oh, did I say March? Yeah, I actually put it's April. It's April because that would actually be today, wouldn't it? So excuse me for the typo. So we'll see you next month. Thank you for your time this morning. Have a great day.